So, an example. This is an example from an Edmund Frey tool, which is a real one. I just masked the names here because I don't want you to recognize who is it, who it is, right? But when I put login name, okay, that means that the format of the login name was fine. So can you spot problems? Accuracy issues. Administrator owns lots of machines. Yeah, uh, one here, one here, yes. Duplicate serial numbers? Yes, very good. And here as well. Others? There's a one under login name, that looks wrong. Which one? There's a one under the login name. Oh, yeah, very good one. Looks wrong. Mm. Is there a very good idea or something? <laughs> Like, is the Nerva and IBM the same thing? Because IBM ThinkPads became the name the yeah. Nerva ThinkPads. Exactly. CN700 isn't a manufacturer. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, yes. Here? Yeah. Yeah. The first serial number is a bit dodgy. The what? Yes. Going is a bit a strange serial number. This one? It's not the first one, top one. Ah, the first one. Yeah, going. Yeah. <laughs> no, more than numbers of underscores in it. Uh, yeah, here. Yeah. Missing data for versions. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah I appear there. This, this is a real case. I, I didn't invent anything. That's real. <laughs> That's <laughs> real. It's not a CCM, but it could be. No, SCCM just doesn't work. <laughs> what? SCCM just doesn't work. No, no, the SCCM has the same issues. So, uh, yeah. So I remember going, yeah, so it's quite wrong. What can we do about it? This is typically a DMI information. This is something that the inventory tool goes to the machine, they use a normal call, let's say, to the DMI structure. And this is the answer. So the machine is answering going. What can I do? Nothing. So it's definitely wrong. OK, here. Interesting, same serial number. It's a virtual machine. So Microsoft, for some reason, has created serial numbers for the virtual machines. Unfortunately, it's always the same. Uh, what we do with that? So if you have a, a nice uh, interface that says, oh, your serial number is unique for all my PCs, that is good. It doesn't work. You can see here as well three times same serial number and three time three names which are different. And you, when you look closer, you see it's the same machine. Oh, that's really a duplicate. Uh, you can see that login names are a bit funny here. So that's typical a process problem. What happens? Is that the people who played with this machine? This was a machine which was. Windows XP, which had been migrated to Windows 7. Doing so, they have given it to someone else. So they have taken the machine from one person, which is Windows XP, they have given the person another machine. This machine went back to the office to be upgraded, and we can see that it has been inventory at this time. So they give the machine a strange name with XXX, cool, and you can see that it's administrator running it. So, no real user, right? And then, they put it back together again and they give it to another person, so which is the second row here. So this is very, very bad. My problem here is, if I wish I were working for Unisys, I am called Jason Clark when I work for HP. No way. My name, I keep my name, okay? I may decide, if I'm an artist, to take another name that's fine, but I don't agree that someone else picked my Michel Veron name, which was left before I became an artist, and, and called it this way. So why should we allow this for machines? If a machine has a name, you should keep it. If, for some reason, you need to change it because it changed organization, it changed sites, and so on and so on, and there is a naming convention saying that on this site you should start with some, something else, that's fine, but the old name should remain obsolete, definitely. So for me, that's a, a process issue. I need to chase the people to make sure they work in the right way. 
and if issues like that had happened outside your controller, I believe Microsoft at one stage used to describe Microsoft Corporation in about five different ways, five different spellings, as well. and spell word, um, or mm -hmm. word processor could be five different products. So that's Microsoft's problem in terms of not consistently naming its products and its corporation. Yeah. Yes, and you have an example here who is a, with a Lenovo, typically, uh, and you put spot it well. See here, IBM. Why? It's a simple, simple, okay? Yeah. Well, perhaps it was. So IBM why IBM. suddenly it just happened to, to name yeah. IBM? So my understanding is that maybe they they have this machine uh, developed by some other uh, companies, some um, third party. Okay. Uh, well, they sold the Nova. They sold the whole thing the Nova. What I tend to, to think is that Lenovo and IBM is not very strict on their VMI standards. Oh, probably not. <laughs> when I see that, these three lines here, mm -hmm. see here, X2200, and suddenly Sync Center XXXXX doesn't make sense. So it seems like they are not really paying attention to what they do. Another thing is that they use this clear naming in the version column, whereas Dell using it in the model column. So I, I asked, in fact, what was going on. In fact, the weird thing about Lenovo or IBM, they may use the, serial, the same serial number for several things. So you're never too sure if you have a unicity in your serial number. You are sure you have a unique serial number if you combine serial number with the model number. Because the model number, you may have a serial number which is unique in this model. So that's completely weird, right? So if you are creating something that just ingests automatically information in your CMDB, when it goes to a Dell, you may say, okay, if you find the name of the machine in this column and a version maybe here, but when it comes to Lenovo, sorry, it's not, not working this way, it's working differently, in an opposite way. And the weird thing is that you may find on the box the serial number made of 74 blah 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 and this. In the same, concatenated in the same string. Which makes things very, very complicated. Other things that you, could, you, could, you find human errors, like this formation called AB. Uh, AB is normally, uh, the naming convention is AB, two characters for the country. So we have AB UK, I believe, or, yeah, AB US, AB DF, AB UK, and suddenly I have AB December. What that is? Doesn't make sense. So it's a naming convention issue. What I find is that in fact, <coughs> the naming convention recently changed this customer. They change it. So now this is a new norm, and the old norm was different. <laughs> and it's still vegan. Everything. So you get all the legacy. And say, oh yeah, but in five years, you will be fine because all the machines will have been replaced by this time, and all the names uh, will be clear. Cool. So what do I do by doing five years? <laughs> I have rubbish. Okay. So we can continue the, like this, for example. We have um, here, I found the name of my favorite customer engineer. Cool, in the customer file. I have no idea, right? It's completely useless. No, the machine is not belonging to Unisys, it's just belonging to the customer. And in that case, no, it's belonging to me. Mm. They know what to do with that. The come back to your example where you had three serial numbers the same, and yeah. not getting names because the machine has been reappropriated. Yeah. How would you normally deal with that on the process level? Sorry? How would you recommend dealing with that on the process level? Should it be on the process level? So uh, uh, yeah, I made a uh, I did use the documentation because I found that documentation was not written. So it was known by certain people and some other people have a different understanding. That there is no documents that say process is like that. You assign name names this way using this naming convention, and when you replace a machine to upgrade it. You don't change the name if it's still the same organization. You only can change the name if you change for organization of sites. And anyway, the name that was previously used 
could not be reused for anything else. So that's what I'm doing. I'm rewriting a uh, process like that, just to make sure that people understand it and accept it. So what does that name actually belong to? Because you can take a PC, you can take out the hard, the hard drive, you can take out the motherboard, you can take out all the drives, all you're left with the case. Where does the serial number actually reside in the CD of the PC? Nice mm -hmm. point and a very interesting thing. And, uh, and it's even worse for virtual machines. Mm -hmm. what, is, what is the name of a virtual machine? I guess it's virtual. Right? Yeah. In this simplified model, I had a, a, a layer which was called physical and another one which was called virtual or logical. So host name is typically in the logical part because you can bring host names anywhere, on any physical. Yeah. So normally, you, only the, the serial number is, can be used for physical things, whereas uh, host name could be used for logical things. And the serial number kind of relates to the case, which has the serial number stamped on it. Yeah. yeah well, so that, that's, again, going back, in fact, to my next slide, which is naming convention. Mm -hmm. You have to be very, very clear how you, you name the sheets. I have customers who say, Hmm, I found a solution. Everything will be named after the serial number. Actually, there is a case here. That one, they use a serial number in the name with a prefix. But this is completely wrong because you can't find anywhere else the same naming convention. Nowhere. That's the only one. Anyway, that's that. So it turned out that this machine is not belonging to the customer. Cool. So I have also as a other problem that not all machines are belonging to the customer. How do I know? Right? I may know by naming convention. Uh, actually, that could be a good one. But as I said, uh, Lenovo has a tendency to uh, not be strict on serial numbers. And anyway, when you reach virtual machines, then you're screwed because it doesn't, doesn't work. So you have to find a way, which is agreed, in my case, with the customer. Because this needs to be valid across the organization and across any sort of CIs. So it should be valid for PCs, for servers, for network, for whatever. So any, and it's not straightforward at all. I don't find the, the best solution yet. If, if someone has the best practice, let me know about it. I'm not sure. Because you always find cases where things like that happen. And uh, I had another situation to this customer, as they have also machines for displaying information on large screens. All these machines have the same serial number, and they are physical. So here we have virtual machines. So in our case, we have a, a, an additional complexity, uh, because as I said, the machine is multi-tenant. Since we have 440 customers in one machine. I mean, we need a way to, to have identifiers which are unique, whatever customer we are talking about. So we have a norm in, in family. I didn't say I didn't say what it is, but we have a way which is a combination of fields. In fact, we combine several fields together to make an, an identifier which is valid even in a multi-tenant situation with hundreds of feeds. So naming convention is critical. Normalization, I talked about it. So you have seen the example. Quite challenging, yes. Uh, how you deal with that. So in my case, in fact, we implement what we call rules. And everything which is too dodgy is going to be handled manually. So hopefully we, have, we are offshoring this information. <coughs> this task is offshore to India. And uh, so it's not too costly. Otherwise, if it was done in Europe, it would cost an arm and a leg, which is not, not normal. So that's how we do it. But I'm not really happy with it. I would like to have a full automation. It's very, very, very complex. If you are doing something about the data, that means if you are filtering it in any way, or modifying it, or rejecting it, or whatever, you need to keep trace of that so that your interface must produce reports on everything. That's how we, we do that. So we, we send these reports first to the configuration manager, check them, and then we send that to the data owner can do something about it. 
So, as I said, in some cases it happens sometimes that we do full automation, knowing full well that sometimes we have bad, bad things going, going through it. But as we can't do anything about it, we won't, don't want to lose time anyway, uh, even offshoring it, because it gets no value. 